Hello, what we have here is another Raspberry Pi demo, which I'll later port over to the Arduino. Uh, let me show you what's involved here. We're, our main focus is going to be the MM5451 serial input chip. Um, it has a whopping 35 open collector or open drain outputs and two single input lines. In the case of this demonstration, I'm going to use an Arduino, and the program is written in Python. Here's the Raspberry Pi. There's my power hub. Here's my breakout board. Let's focus in on the breakout board. And you should be able to see this counting from 0 to 9 at the same time, the 8 LEDs will be counting in binary. And there you go. What is the MM5451? Uh, it's, an L it's designed to be an LED display driver. It has an actual brightness control that I can use here to control the brightness. It's just a 100K pot. Has serial data input, two lines, clock and data. It has a wide power operation from 4.75 to 12 volts on the output. Has 35 um, TTL level outputs and you have to run this thing at 5 volts. You cannot run it at 3, which is why I have the level translator from 3.3 to 5 volts located here on the board. If you're using an Arduino, that's not a problem. That was supposed to count to 255 and stop. I'll go ahead and start the count again. How this is wired up, oh, the neat part about this, you do not need dropping resistors for your LEDs or your um, LED seven segment displays. You can also use this on alphanumeric displays. Hey, I got 35 outputs on this thing. Uh, it's really simple how you get it started, and we'll look closely at the programming. Uh, later on in the video, but you have one start bit, and then you'll clock in 35 uh, following bits. The first bit that you clock in, of course, is going to be segment A on this display. The first eight bits, of course, are running this display. The second eight bits are using to count the LEDs. And then I have an additional 18 outputs I could use on this side. And it's just about counted down. All right, let's explore the programming of the MM5451. Let's look first at the actual hardware we're going to be programming. This is the uh, pinout of the MM5451. It's a 40-pin DIP chip. Um, it really consists of two inputs, well, maybe three if you want to look at the brightness control over here and you'll see that bit 1 that's the first one you would shift in would end up at pin 18 and the last bit you would shift in uh, is going to end up at pin 23 this is a block diagram this part data enable is for the 5450 it's it's simply bit 35 for the 5451 your serial data in, your data clock, and you'll notice that we have a potentiometer or brightness control going from VCC back to pin 19. Here is my actual Raspberry Pi connections. There's your data and clock input. This is my brightness control from VCC back to pin 19. Got to have this 0.1 microfarad cap. I think they said a 0.001. I used a 0.1. 
bits 1 through 8 go to a 7 segment display and bits 9 through 16 goes to um, LEDs 1 through 8. Here is your LED connections. Uh, all the cathodes go back to the chip. All the anodes tie together and goes right back to 5 volts. We do not require dropping resistors. That's taken care of by the internal brightness control. And here is the LED uh, seven segment display. In this case I use an LN 516YA, Y being yellow, A being common anode. This is how it's wired would be wired internally. Your common would go back to 5 volts. And these numbers down here refer to bits, does not refer to pin numbers. All right, let's take a look at the programming. All right, similar to other ones I've done, I have designated GPIO 12 as my clock and GPIO 7 as my uh, data bit output. Both pins have been set up as outputs through the GPIO.out and I've set up um, each of them initialize them to zero. Next I have a uh, subroutine I call pulse clock. Basically what it does is the line goes high then the line goes low. This also consists of two serial shift out routines. The first one we'll look at is I call SSR write LSB. That shifts out the least significant bit first. And the only difference is, is how we handle the bitwise and, and the shifts. In the case of this, I'm going to take the value that's sent to this subroutine and I'm going to bitwise and with uh, zero, um, one. I'm only going to have two outputs. It's going to be one or zero. If the output is one, I'm going to set the data bit high, pin, if it, uh, else it's going to be set low. Then I'm going to pulse the clock. It pulsed the first bit in. I'm going to shift the value that I had one bit right and repeat the process eight times to do all eight bits. SSR right MSB is identical except I'm using a mask of 0x80 and I'm checking to see if it's equivalent to 80 or 0. If it's equivalent to 80 I set the high on the data bit output pin else it's low. I pulse the clock and then I will left shift value one place and repeat the process a total of eight times. Now we're coming to a little definition called zero right. Um, all this does is it places a zero on the data bit and then it, uh, whatever number I send to it, it's just going to clock. It's just going to pulse the clock ever how many times. It'll shift in nothing but zeros. Let's understand how this device operates. You start off with a high on the data. You clock it once. That tells it to get ready for the next 35 or so bits. And when the 36th bit is clocked in, everything is shifted to the output. We'll see that more when, it, uh, when we see the main loop program below. As I mentioned, I have a um, LED display. Here is my uh, bit codes relative to a byte. Now, I did this in binary. I could have done it in whatever. This is the d codes for the LED display 0 through 9. I've defined this as a more or less an array or table called seg code. Notice the square brackets and I just put them in order. And when, for instance, if I call seg code index 0, it's going to produce this code here and so forth. 
All right, welcome back. We're, let's go ahead and finish this uh, code off. This is our main uh, loop right here. It's a Python for loop. Um, it's going to run from 0 to 256. Of course, it'll go to 255. This is the sequence we need to do to get the device to operate. I got to send my start bit. So on the data bit out, I'm going to set it high and I'm going to pulse the clock. Now it's going to wait for the following series of bits and on bit 36 it will latch over automatically all these 35 or so bits to the output. Okay, let's look at here SSR right least significant bit. This is going to refer to my uh, seven segment LED display. What it's going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to index the table segment code to my count mod 10. Now why would I want to mod 10 something? Mod 10 is an integer division remainder. In other words from 0 to 255 it's simply going to return 0 to 9. That's the segment code I've defined in the table that we talked discussed earlier. If, for example, you want it to light up the decimal point, just take whatever the code is after my count mod 10 and add 0x80. I thought I would just mention that because the eighth bit, that's a bit seven turns on your decimal point when you and that would be 0x80. Nonetheless I use least significant bit because segment A is connected to bit 1 and so forth. Bit 1, the first bit that you shift in is going to be bit 1. Next I'm going to use SSR right MSB, the most significant bit, and that's just going to take um, my count and it's going to display on the LEDs in binary a value from 0 to 255. All right, now I used 8 bits for the uh, LED segment for the LED display and I used 8 bits for the LEDs. Now I have to have a total of 35 uh, bits shifted in or 36 that will latch over internally to the outputs. That's what the zero write routine is, is that it writes simply another, oh, I don't know, in this case, 20 or 21 bits into the device so it will latch over internally. Then we'll delay for 200 milliseconds and this will loop through for 255 times when it finally plays out the terminal will print goodbye and the program will exit. So the secret is to this you have the start bit clock it then whatever combination of the next 35 or 36 bits depending on the way you want to look at it go in um, on the 36th bit which is does not appear for example there will you will not see the 36th bit um, it will it's just a considered a latch pulse then it's output to display and that's all we got to do to use the MM5451 so I hope you can find some use for this device uh, I thought it was fun either though the um, spec sheet was just terrible it took a while to figure out because the spec sheet simply was not very clear on everything, but this is how you do it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for listening.